Hey there, thanks for joining us for another tour today. We're at Moss Mountain Farm. We're gonna walk through the vegetable garden. Uh, we're at high summer and there's some big blooms that we've put in our very diverse vegetable garden that I wanna talk about. And if you don't think that you have enough room to grow things like sunflowers, hey, look at this one that we're growing in a single pot. It's about 16 inches in diameter. Isn't this a beauty? There's more coming up. Now, before we go any further, I want to quickly recognize our garden tour sponsors. A big thank you to Gilbert H. Wild and Son, Sun Patience, Arkansas Parks and Tourism, Ralston Family Farms, First Community Bank, and Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. These tours would not be possible without them. Check out our sponsor page on my website, pallensmith.com for more information. We're here at one of my favorite places at Moss Mountain Farm. It's the vegetable garden. I love it because there's so much activity. We've really focused on diversity in this garden. I feel like it's so, so, so important. And so we try to integrate a lot of flowers along with vegetables and herbs and fruits and berries and all kinds of things. So it makes it really a fun place just to walk through and see all of the activity, the life. But this time of year in summer, we have some really big blooms that I wanna share with you. One of them, of course, is the sunflower. And uh, this is just the long walk through the, the main part of the vegetable garden. If you've been here on one of our Moss Mountain tours, uh, you know this very well. This leads down to the what we call the hidden rose garden. And before you get to the hidden rose garden, you walk through the alley of hydrangeas, uh, which always are captivatingly beautiful, particularly in the month of May and early June. But here we are in high summer, and just look at how things are really coming along. Uh, this old wheelbarrow, we've planted it with that uh, wonderful kufia, which the hummingbirds love. But we also got some of the uh, this, this wonderful form of Tradescantia, uh, or it's in the Tradescantia family, uh, called Purple Heart, which is a beautiful annual. Uh, we've got some sun patients coming along here. Um, and then back here, I wanted you to see this sunflower. It's absolutely outrageous. Look at the stalk on this thing. It came up in the container as a seed from last year. And look how tall it is. It's heavy because of all of these, these flowers. And if you look closely at the center, you can see all the seed. And I love leaving these like this, even though this one does need to be staked up, I think. It's sort of a Jack and the Beanstalk kind of plant. But we have birds that love these uh, fresh seed, like the goldfinches we've seen here. Um, that's what's so wonderful about the diversity of plants, brings a diversity of other things in the way of some of these uh, beneficial insects and of course our, our friends, the songbirds. But um, you can see this one has finished. Um, it's a nice seed head on it. But then look, we've got another bud coming along here. So this thing will just continue to bloom. Uh, so I really, I really do need to get this thing staked. But in the interim, um, it's a great place to uh, have the birds come and feed. The other thing that's really kind of interesting and we love to do is uh, as we harvest our sunflowers, we bundle them and we dry them. Uh, in previous episodes, you've seen our drying house. And in the winter, you can just hang these bundles of sunflower dried heads uh, in the trees for the birds and they love it. So it's, a, it's an easy bird feeder for you to think about. Okay, we're gonna let this guy down and get back here on the central axis and uh, walk along the vegetable garden here and talk about some of the plants. Uh, you know my, my love of the hyacinth bean vine. You can see just how beautiful this is growing. We grow them from seed every year. And then as we walk along, some of the uh, tall daylilies that I've been working on are really coming along nicely. Um, we love to put the petals in salads, but they're wrapping up for the season. It's getting a little, getting on in the season here. So if you look over, over this direction, I just wanna call your attention to those big red blooms. This is sort of a design lesson. Uh, red is an arresting color, our eye immediately goes to it. And what I love about that, which is a hardy hibiscus, I can't remember the cultivar name, but there are a lot of great ones out there. And Gilbert H. Wild and Son sells them because they're such a wonderful perennial. They'll ship them right to your door. 
But look at the size of those blooms from the, the distance. And that's what I like is to think about the, the garden, the sequence of bloom, but also the scale of the blooms because little tiny blooms like we've seen with lantana and the kufia as well as the blue fortune hyssop, they're smaller. So you need those big boulder leaves. So why don't we walk this way and uh, move a little closer to to those and then talk about some other of my favorites along the way. So the border, we try to punctuate it with some really hot colors. You can see here we've got uh, the wonderful sun patience with variegated foliage next to uh, a beautiful chartreuse colored coleus. Um, and these just get better over the season. I think the crescendo is sometime in late October and early November. Uh, for this garden. Um, several years ago, I found this old uh, variety of Amerigold, and these are wonderful for cutting in the house. So many of the marigolds that we grow today are the little dwarf wrench marigolds, which are beautiful, but I really like these big ones that will bloom really till the first frost, and uh, the color is just fantastic. But let's move over here a little closer and take a look at these hardy hibiscus. Um, I just did this big bed of them uh, because I just love the visual impact of them. But look at this flower, isn't that gorgeous? Now you say hardy hibiscus, what does that mean? Well, we all know about tropical hibiscus. They're great for your patio. The flower looks very similar to this. Uh, sometimes they can be even more ruffled. What um, I love about the hardy hibiscus is the plant is perennial. It comes back year after year, it can grow beautifully as far north as Minnesota. A lot of my friends up that way grow this in their gardens and it loves the heat. So the hotter it gets, the better it even performs. It's a member of the cotton family actually. And if you look closely at a cotton bloom, you will see the similarities. Um, but what, what this one does is um, we'll bloom until frost. And then what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll cut all of these uh, stalks down to the ground. And then next year they'll jump up and grow to almost five feet tall. And what you can't really see because of this exquisite flower is just behind it. Look at all of these flowers that are yet to come. Now what happens is they begin to fade a little bit. This one's fading. Uh, this one's finished up here. So we just pull that off. They drop very easily like that. So this plant is what we call self-cleaning, which is always kind of nice. Um, so the, the dead blooms just fall off and you don't have to deadhead, which I think adds a lot. But just look at the scale of these flowers and there's really nothing easier to grow. But the thing to remember is you've got to have full sun for you to get this kind of flower power out of them. What, what I'm trying to do in this garden, and, and you'll see over time as you follow us, um, I'm trying to think of colors and color associations. So if you look over here, you'll see these peaches um, and they have a red, reddish tint to them, which I think works very well with that bright color of the hibiscus, um, those reddish tones. I, I wanna just point out this, this peach. It's really meant to be an ornamental type peach. Um, if you could see it blooming in the very early spring, you'll, you would know what I mean. But then when it leaves out, it is, really dark burgundy red. And then through the summer, you can see all the new growth is very, very red, which gives that nice warm color to this, this plant in juxtaposition to what we just saw with those big blooms. So that foliage and bloom combination is really one of the important elements of design when you're thinking about a garden and how to place things. All right, now let's talk about some things that you can grow. Um, Sunflowers will bloom very quickly. They grow as long as you give them full sun. I want to I want to walk you over here for just a moment and show you this new sunflower that I've tried this year, and uh, it's absolutely staggering. Um, it's just come into bloom, and I just love it. Look at the look at the color of that. Isn't that perfection? And look at all of these new buds coming along, which means we'll have more of these. I love using them in the house. They're so fresh this time of year. And I wish I could remember the name of this one. Uh, what we'll do is try to look it up and, and uh, go back and see where I've ordered seed and find the name of this one. I don't know about you, is it hard for you to keep tags on things and remember all the names? Well, it certainly is, is for me. But these ray petals are so beautiful with their butter yellow uh, 
uh, color uh, closer to the, the center and then the further out they get a little bit lighter. But uh, this is delightful. Love using this. Um, just a bouquet of them in the kitchen it is so nice and fresh. Uh, some of the warmer toned ones look great with some of the upholstery in the house. And literally when I'm thinking about color, when I'm thinking about what I want to grow, I think about, well, what rooms would I use these flowers in? And over time, I found certain colors and flowers that work really well in the house in those in those rooms. So it makes it that much easier. I always like to have something fresh from the garden in the house, whether it's in the fridge ready to go, uh, you know, in the stove or oven. I mean, let's face it, who doesn't like fresh flowers in their home? Um, so this one is going to be one I'm going to replant again next year. Oh, wait, here's a tad. Wait a minute. OK, so it's called white light sun flower. <laughs> so uh, I actually did um, did remember to have that uh, tag stuck in here along the side. Um, but anyway, white light, if you want to order the seed, these things will bloom within like 60 days. Um, why don't we come around? I want to show you how the gourds are doing. Um, another big idea or a big uh, expression in the garden. Um, you can see these are coming along really well here. Uh, and the idea is by fall, these will have come all the way across and covered this um, beautifully and we'll have lots of gourds hanging down. The idea in this garden is everywhere you look, I want you to see something different, something interesting. As you look down these paths, uh, the flowers sort of fall over. They're mixed with vegetables and so forth. There's one other annual that we grow from seed. And actually, over time, it's kind of come back. It's a volunteer, uh, one called uh, Cosmos. But com come over here and take a look at it. Um, here are our friends, those giant marigolds again that we were talking about. And I don't know about you, but I love the aroma of, of marigold. But right over here, you can see um, this is a, a Cosmos called Cosmic Orange. and. Um, we're already beginning to save some of the seed of this plant. Um, the seed are in their tiny little little things um, that we we try to save for next the next season. There they are, right there. You can see that's the those are the seed that we'll save. And we've just had a rain, so these are very wet. And you typically would want to harvest seed when they're very dry. They'll open up. Here's some here. You can see some more seed there from the cosmos. Very long, very long shaped seed. Uh, but the color, isn't it fantastic? And this is the thing about so many of these, these, these annuals, whether it's the cosmos, whether it's the, uh, the marigold here, or whether it's the celoisia, the more you cut um, and use them, the more those little side branches that come off. And as we've seen, those side branches have buds and those buds turn into flowers. I hope you'll come and see us soon here at Moss Mountain Farm. Uh, thank you for subscribing to our channel and until next time, happy gardening.